Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our special retro review of the Palm TX. This is a PDA that was released in 2005 and discontinued in 2009. And as such, it remains one of the last PDAs to be released by Palm. It's actually one of my favorite Palm PDAs just because it's really powerful. It packs in Wi-Fi in addition to Bluetooth, so you can definitely uh, browse the web and access more applications. There's an SD card slot like most PDAs uh, from Palm, but it also had a fast CPU, a 312 megahertz Intel Xscale PXA270, which was a lot faster than previous generation Palm Tungsten devices. It ran on Palm OS Garnet 5.4.9, and it was also pretty fully packed. It also had uh, infrared as well for beaming technology, and a 1,250 milliamp hour rechargeable lithium iron battery. And it was it was replaced actually um, by Palm with their newer smartphones, but it actually was the newer version that replaced the Tungsten T5. So taking a look at the design of the unit here, it resembles a lot of the older tungsten PDAs. Like for example, the tungsten uh, E2 that we have here, uh, you can see how it definitely takes the same design cue with the curves on the sides. Of course, the, so the screen of the TX is a lot larger at 3.9 inches. It's, rel it's relatively large. Four inches is about the same as a modern age smartphones, so it feels pretty comfortable even holding it today. Now the body of the TX is crafted out of plastic, out of polycarbonate plastic, rather than metal like some previous versions. So that was one of the disappointing facets of this PDA. Taking a look, uh, we have a virtual graffiti area here, so it's going to pop up on screen when you turn the unit on instead of having a built-in physical one. And there's also on the bottom a five-way navigation toggle, a shortcut for the web browser. There's also a contacts list, um, organizer functions, and a power on and off switch for the home switch as well. And tapping on that once, again, automatically turn the screen on. The sides featured a port for you to create the uh, to insert the flip cover case. That was an optional accessory. And on the very top, there's a 3.5mm jack for listening to music with the MP3 player. These are the ports for the wireless features. A on-off switch, pressing on that for a few seconds longer, turns on a brighter backlight. And there's also an SD card slot for expanding memory up to 4 gigabytes. On the side is the stylus port, which is crafted out of metal and fairly large and comfortable and easy to use. And finally, on the back, you, have to, you just have the loudspeaker and a reset grill and some basic information about the product. The bottom features a proprietary charging and syncing port, which is unfortunate because it's incompatible with previous versions of tungsten devices. Taking a look at the UI, there are two ways to access some of the functions and the applications. I can tap on this uh, list view, and also I can go into the traditional view found on most Palm PDAs. You can see how the screen does a good job of showing the icons. It's relatively bright and vibrant. Of course, it's not high resolution by today's standards, but it still does a good job of displaying graphics and watching a few video clips here and there. So taking a look, there are some basic applications you find on most Palm PDAs, like the calculator. Um, everything is pretty responsive and fast, thanks to the addition of a fast uh, processor underneath the hood. There's also the addition of the to edit and create the documents for Office. Uh, they correlate to things like Word, Excel, and you can also send these via email because there's Wi-Fi on board here uh, to other people as well as print it out if your, if your printer has Wi-Fi on board, which is pretty useful. There's a basic music client that you can use to listen to a few tunes on the go, so as an MP3 player. Sound quality in the unit is okay, uh, but it's a little bit tinny, even though it's quite loud. I can also have music playing in the background as I multitask, which is a cool feature to have. And finally, there's also the ability for you to access your uh, different photos and videos using the browser. There's no accelerometer. You do have the option to rotate the screen manually if I tap on the screen down below here to get a larger view, maybe for browsing the web or something like that. So taking a look at some other features on here, there is an email client. Uh, it does a okay job with Gmail and some other clients out there like Hotmail uh, that you can set up and sync with. And finally, there's a task manager, a web browser that we're going to take a closer look at in a moment, and a memo pad. Uh, going into traditional view, there's a few more features like Versamail, which is the email client, a world clock. You can take a look at that. This is a virtual graffiti area where you can handwrite. Tapping on ABC brings up the keyboard, which is absolutely tiny by today's standards, but it was actually quite good back in the day. And the handwriting recognition is surprisingly good uh, even in today's standards. It's pretty fast to type out some messages on this thing. You can also attach a keyboard using Bluetooth if you did not want to type using the on-screen prompts. SMS is also on here, Solitaire as a game. You can download thousands of free games online through the virtual community and then sync it using a PC. And that's basically all the built-in apps. Down below here, there are a few more uh, informational pieces. You can take a look at your time, your notifications, which is the exclamation mark, the Bluetooth, which I can tap on once to turn Bluetooth on and off, and also Wi-Fi down below over here. So for example, I'm gonna turn Wi-Fi on. And after a while, it's gonna say, connect and afterwards it's going to initialize and after a few seconds it should be connected. So it's pretty fast in terms of uh, connecting to Wi-Fi. 
I can also bring up the virtual keyboard, bring it down again. And on the top, of course, you can tap on there to learn more about your battery status on the product itself. And now we're gonna take a look at the web browser. So by today's standards, this browser is not good anymore. In fact, a lot of channels and things cannot be viewed. It also can't recognize foreign characters such as Chinese, which is a bit disappointing. However, it is still pretty easy to use uh, for basic sites like checking the news for weather and also going to Google to do some quick searches. You can actually still view images and uh, you can't watch YouTube videos necessarily, but there are workarounds for that that people can still use the uh, product today. So that's good. So taking a look over here, this is a list of your bookmarks. I can tap on Google, for example, to go into the Google screen. And there are also different views that you can use, like the classic version or the mobile version. And this creates a more complex site if you want to view the images. It's not fully optimized, again, because the browser is outdated. Um, on the top, there's a lightning, uh, kind of a lightning icon. You can tap on there to access a fast mode, which disables all graphics, and the normal mode, which shows off all the graphics. It takes a bit longer to load back and forth between previous pages. Over here, you can go on um, to tap onto a specific page, maybe going back home. Um, and tapping over here on the, on the global icon goes to takes you to a specific web page that you have to type in there. You have shortcuts to .com, .net, .org, and taking a look at some other web pages, I have eBay here. You can see it's not fully loaded or optimized, but at least you can see most of the things that you want to, uh, the categories and searches. You can also go into the mobile view. This is right now the traditional desktop view, which again, um, it's not as useful anymore, but at least you can still view things and uh, get a good idea of how things are loading. You can see here that scrolling back and forth is actually still relatively fast and speedy. I can use, of course, a D-pad, or I can use my stylus. It's not kinetic scrolling, but I can use the sidebar. I can't flick or anything like that, but um, at least loading pages is relatively fast. Let's say I wanted to go to deals and gifts. You can see that loading between the pages is also relatively speedy, which is good. On the top, you have an indicator of how much uh, time is being elapsed uh, in terms of receiving the data and going to the network. Um, again, not too bad by today's standards, and you can see how some pages will be too large to be displayed, but at least you have a basic idea of how things are working. Um, and again, it's still kind of interesting to kind of go back in time to take a look at this product and browse the web, maybe to check some news over the New York Times or just maybe the weather or something like that. It will work for those purposes, and you can also get a more up-to-date web browser uh, by downloading one. Nice. This has been a quick video retro look back at the Palm TX, one of the most powerful and last Palm PDAs to be released. It was also one of my favorite, thanks to the addition of both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in a slim and lightweight package and also offered pretty good battery life and performance for the money. Check out more information in our original review, which was posted way back uh, in 2008. You can check out that on our original website. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.